Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm gonna talk you through how to do the Mishko effect today. Um, well, that's what it's been dubbed by a lot of people. It's basically the stretchy effect that you saw at the beginning, um, where, where the text blends in and melts into another more text. Uh, it's a really cool effect. I'm gonna show you how to do it in After Effects. Uh, so you can add in animations and make it look more than just a static picture. So we'll get, we'll get into the tutorial and let's just do this thing. What we want to do is create a new composition and create mine 1080 by 1080 because I was using it for Instagram, but feel free to do whatever you want. I'll make it 10 seconds long. And here we go. So basically what we want to do is create a text layer. Um, I'm going to put board in the house because I've been very bored in my house currently due to COVID. Actually, I'm going to keep it short just so it's easier for the tutorial to go along. Let's just create board. Um, and then I'll choose a typeface, maybe. Here's a good one, goth and black, always good typeface. Um, I'm going to leave the space in at 90 just so that there's a there's a bit of space between each word. And then let's just bring the size up a bit. And center it, align it and center. Not there, just at the top, bring it up. And now all you need to do is duplicate this layer twice. And then if you shift left one layer and shift right the other, maybe bring them back a little bit so they're not so apart and then just change the color of each text layer. So I'm gonna create one blue one and one green, like so. And then the main layer, we're gonna create yellow. And then bring the yellow one at the top, just so we can see it. There we go, so we've got the basis. And then just tweak the text layers position so, you know, they're what you prefer. So that looks kind of good to me. So what I'm gonna do now is duplicate these layers and then bring them, shift, command, right bracket, brings them to the top and then just shift down to the bottom. Right, and now what you wanna do is just change the color of these bottom layers. So I'm gonna completely just turn these on their head a bit. Green and then we will choose a red, maybe. Something like that, actually. Blue might work quite nicely. Cool. So we've basically got the layers now. All we need to do is create an adjustment layer for the effect to work. Create the adjustment layer. And now what we want to do is add the liquify effect. So if you go to your effects, go to liquify, add that here. And now what you want to do is use this liquify button here and just go onto the options and warp tools. So here you've got the brush, brush size and brush pr pressure. I think these settings that I've got now will work fine because is what I used last. And what you want to do is just brush the layers down and try not ruin the text too much so I may need to add more pressure to that yeah there you go the more pressure you add the, the further down it will go add a bit more pressure and basically if you just shift drag downwards you'll create like a straighter line um, if that makes sense what I'm gonna do is just to speed up the process is gonna pause and come back when I've stretched the text downwards. I'm gonna do this roughly because it takes a lot of CPU power. Um, basically what you wanna do is drag them down, just you know, use your fine skills and just bring it down nicely. And then what you wanna do is, that's so that's the top layer. So we'll, what we wanna do is uh, keep make another adjustment layer basically. So if you create another adjustment layer, and this is gonna be for the bottom text, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-comp these into separate layers so we can edit them um, separately if we need to. Uh, so if we go to adjustment layer again, and put it under, so the bottom ones are these ones. So we wanna make sure that this is there. 
and this one is here. So now we add liquify again to the top one and we will use the same settings as prior and what we will do now is bring up the, the bottom layers. Obviously you want to make sure that this looks you know good so take your time with it. The longer you uh, put into it the better it will look. And as you can see the reason why we're doing this is because when you liquefy them it's moving the other layers away but if we pre-comp them it should work fine. So just keep bringing it up, don't worry about the yellow disappearing, That will we'll bring that back soon. Now what you want to do is pre-comp uh, the top and bottom layers, so just right click, pre-compose, uh, we'll put board, uh, is this on the top one or the bottom one? I assume it's the top, I'm going to put top, pre-comp that, and then pre-comp the bottom. Board, bottom, move all attributes into, and now, as you can see, the effect is not applied to the thing. So now mine looks quite messy, but I can show you what it looks like in a in a in a comp that I've done that I put a bit more time into. So, as you can see here, I've blended, I've made them a little bit nicer. You see, I worked on the letters here; um, they all look quite nice together. And as you can see, they're in different separate layers, and this is what they originally. This is what they look like. I've kind of gone for a diagonal shape, um, just to make it look different. So it kind of goes upwards in a diagonal pattern. And then the next step would be to now make these look so they're not so just one on top of another. So to do that, if we go back to our composition, what we want to do is add this into a add your comp that you've made into a, another, another comp so we'll rename it just to be easier so we'll put board and then this one we're going to create board blend or board effect what we want to do is duplicate the layer and in this layer what we're going to do is add a mask so if you add the rectangle mark marking tool and just mask this part the stretch because what's going to happen is we're going to need to just blur the, the middle parts, not the text. So we've got we've added our mask here. If we mute this, we can see what's there. Cool. And then we want to feather it. Just add like a, a 30 feather. Just take that off, see what it looks like. Maybe a bit more. 50. That should work nicely. And now what we want to do is add a directional blur. So add a directional blur to the top layer. Uh, we'll make that about, and there you go. You start to see it starting to blend together nicely. So you just create the blur length to what you think looks nice. Obviously, you wanna take your time and just, it's all about crafting it nicely. Um, the more time you put in, the better. And then what we wanna do now is add a glow. This would nicely tie it together. Um, let's make the threshold 91. Glow radius maybe about 74. And the intensity to about 1.6. So yeah, with this, just play along with it until it feels right. Um, the more you add to feather, the better as well, to be fair. May even add a hundred further. And then as we've done that, we now add another directional blur, just to tie it nicely together. A hundred, just to blend it a bit more. And once you've done that, we wanna say that you've got this, it's looking really nice. And now you wanna add it into different things. Um, you wanna add like, make add a noise to it, make it look nice, or maybe you want to add a camera movements to it. Um, I'll show you what I've done with my other comp. So what I've done in here is I've taken the layer and I've added this, uh, like this kind of bend into it. So it's almost like something's passing through the ripple, it's like rippling through the, the strings. Um, so what you want to do, so if I go into here, so this is all done, 
and then you want to pre-comp it again you want to pre-comp the board effect and then add the noise and now add a 30 grain see it's starting to make it look quite nice now um, obviously the blue background you don't have to have this is create a solid make it black There we go, it's starting to look quite nice now. And what you'd want to do now, say let's just say we want to create this uh, uh, this kind of ripple into the text. I'll show you it from this comp. What I've done is add an adjustment layer, add the effect called CC Smear, add that to the adjustment layer, and as you can see it's created this kind of, you know, this warpy kind of effect and the effects that I used, the, the settings I used were as follow. So we started, we started the positions at different sides and then we started 42, so let's add a, and 600. So now it creates more of a, um, a thicker ripple instead of a thin one. As you can see, it's kind of pulling it along and I'll just show you the effect in here. What you want to do is start the uh, one of the, the from and two. So we've got them both on the outsides of the left hand side. And then as you go along, you want the from, when you get to the end of the timeline, you want it to end. So we'll see where from is. So we basically want to put the beginning from the left hand side. And then as we get to the end of where we want it to be, we bring them to the right. And if you if you watch, so it comes in and it kind of ripples in. So that's just from, and then we want to do two. So what we want to do is add it a couple frames later and have the same position in. So have it so it starts at the same place, but then maybe about 10 frames. Have it so it's, down so now it's kind of down here at the right hand corner so have it there and then add a frame at the end at the same place where the other end ends so it's kind of it's kind of got a little delay with this keyframe here and it pulls along and what you'll get is a really nice ripple and that looks really nice uh, other effects that you can do to make it look nice is you can pre-comp the layer into um, a position and then add a camera and zoom that in so what I've done here is I've added just to add some craziness to it I've added a warp to the effect um, and then I've added turbulent displace and what the turbulent displace is doing is creating more ripples between this um, the stretchy part which just makes it look a bit more organic more free-flowing um, so do that and you can create some nice effects uh, here's, here's my settings, I added 30 size and what I've done is I've added an evolution to the effect so if you alt click on the stopwatch here and it will bring you up to evolution and then just type in time times 200 and what that will do is just it will make it, it will animate it basically so it will be constantly animating so it will just be like wiggling um, so it just adds a bit more uh, movement to the design and yes, yeah, so you just go crazy with it really like I've added camera positions zoomed it in So I've got a scale of like 194 here. It's just teasing it um, And with the warp and the ripple it just looks nice. It looks like a flowing river and yeah, that's pretty much the effect It's quite simple. It's all about adding the final effects really um, I must reinforce the fact that you have to really get the ripples blended nicely and create something that looks nice with colouring as well and yeah the final effect is really cool um, it's basically what Mishiko does but he does it you know he does different styles each time so big shout out to him I found the effect through that thanks for watching the video guys I hope you enjoyed it be sure to hit that like button and share with your friends and all that for Jazzle I'll see you in the next one bye